Lab Code agents, welcome. Today, Nick Baldwin and myself are talking at Facebook, and we've got Scott Shapiro, our friend from Facebook. Uh, he, he's now become the face of Facebook in real estate. Yeah, like when you think of Facebook, the word face, that's Scott. That's Scott. Scott, <laughs> yesterday we were talking about how you're now second in command to... Uh, <laughs> Well, a, a, a couple of things. One, no, I am not second in command to Mark. And two, as my boss, um, our director, Keith Watts, always says, um, he and I have faces for podcasting. And it is ironic that uh, somehow this face for podcasting ended up on a webinar with you guys. So um, strange times, strange things happen. I love it, dude. Wait a minute. Well, Is your boss, we need to talk to him. Uh, yes, he's camera shy though. He he's he's one who uh, he he's great at this stuff, but he's always like, ah, oh, you go do it. I'm too shy. I'm like, you're not shy. He no, just is a, a good day. he's a great guy. He's That's great very guy. funny, man. Well, welcome again. We appreciate you. you being on, and we appreciate the support from Facebook as well. This way, we can get right into it, man. Yesterday, you shared a document with us on how how things have slightly changed and how we can mm -hmm. approach. Facebook a lot better, right? But I'm not sure if that's where you want to start, Scott. So I'm going to pass it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Tristan. Thanks, Nick. I, I think the first thing I want to start with is first, I hope everybody is safe and sound and well. Um, if you've had anyone, friends or family um, affected directly by having COVID, my thoughts go out to you. Our team's thoughts go out. Um, my sister-in-law had it. I, I know of obviously other friends who've had it. Um, thank God everybody in our sphere is has overcome it, but I just want to impart our thoughts and wishes are to all of you guys. And why we wanted to do this webinar and why we want to continue to show up from the Facebook perspective is to try to help in a very tough time. Um, we know that these times are unprecedented. We've None of us has ever confronted anything like this. Um, it has affected a all businesses, but in particular, we know the effect of what it's done for real estate agents in particular. Um, we know that each state has a little bit of a different slant on whether agents are considered essential workers or not. And so what we want to do today, and I want to be very clear about is we want to help you think about and hearing directly from us from a platform perspective on you know, how to use Facebook Live and Instagram Live. Um, in addition to that, we're going to give some tips on how to shoot video because I also know that the idea for some of you of going out and doing a live broadcast can be very intimidating. So what we want to do over the next 45 minutes or so is really walk you through a couple of things we're seeing about how to show up for your, uh, for your customer base, for your sphere, um, and then pivot. Tristan will show, I'll let you guys know when to show the doc. Um, and we're going to walk through this step by step. Um, Nick and Tristan are going to post it in the group. So you guys can go back to this at any point in time. It's a, simple, you'll see two page document on how to do live, but a lot of the live best practices will also translate into how we can do video. So just know that um, if you're in here and you're like, I want to learn about live, you will. But if you go out of this and say, you know what, I can also do this for video and I can also do this long term for how I show homes. That's a benefit we want to make sure you guys have. I love it, dude. Um, just quick before we get started, can you tell me or can you give me a, a an email address if anybody has a question in regards to their Facebook being hacked or blocked. Is there an email for that? Uh, there, there really isn't a scaled channel. Um, as you guys can imagine, you're, you're about 1.3 million according to NAR and I'm one. Um, what we do is, um, what we do is we do have direct relationships with a lot of the brokerages. So the recommendation would be one of two things. We work uh, directly with a lot of the largest brokerages as a team. So go to your um, folks at your brokerage. So if you're Caldwell Banker, find that person, Century 21, Keller Williams, Remax. Um, those companies compass they have direct contacts to Facebook. Second, um, we work with a lot of the leading tech providers. Um, we're very close to folks at AdWorks all the way to the top to somebody like Jed Carlson, West and Jay, who are great, HomeSnap, HomeSpotter, Aaron Cardell. So we work um, Wailopa with Howard and G. So just know that if you're having some issues, the best way to really have those issues um, taken care of is one, there is a help at FB. That's the most immediate channel that you can help use. at FB? Dot com. Okay. There's also, um, if you go to the Facebook um, for business or Instagram for business pages, they also have direct links. Um, you can file a ticket. But if you do use either your brokerage's 
advertising tool or you use a partner, the ones I kind of called out, back at eMedia is another one, you know, those folks have connections back to our team to help you through that. Um, so uh, happy to help. Always want to make sure folks um, are taken care of in these tough times. I will say we are seeing a little bit of a delay in how fast tickets are getting answered, as you guys can imagine. Um, but we also know that this is an important part of your business. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Oh, too. Of course. I that at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so a couple of things I just wanted to impart before we dive into the actual two page document. Um, what are just some best practices? One of the things that I want to make sure that everybody on uh, this webinar, or if you go back and watch this later, understands is, you know, some thoughts that we have as Facebook on how to show up during this time, things that we're talking to our clients about from you know, our largest partnerships to the individual SMB, the person such as you, you're a CEO of your own business, running your own business. Um, the first thing right now we are getting a lot of questions is how do I show up? And this isn't about live or video, We're, we'll get into this, but this is just the kind of if we zoom back, how do I show up um, for my business to my consumers and to my sphere? Um, the first thing right now is to be authentic. Um, the thing that I think is really important in how you show up is if you are and you have a certain personality and you've been this way and you've shown up this way, continue to do so. Um, I don't think this is a, a time, you know, being authentic is very important. It's, a, it's, it's a best practice no matter what, whether we were dealing with COVID or not. Um, I think it's very important just to be yourself, show up into how um, you, know, you show up each and every day. The second thing is being proactive. One of the things that I think is really important, and I don't need to tell this group this, but you know, you're probably the most active in your community of any small business owners in any any industry we see. Um, you have your finger on the pulse of what's going on in your schools, your synagogues, your churches, your restaurants, the bookstore, the bakery, the coffee shop. Um, being proactive and being a community leader is a, a way that you can show up and communicate with the community, whether you have listings or not. I think that's a very important thing because you've got knowledge about the community that most people don't have. Um, so you can be that local expert. You can right. help that, uh, you know, that restaurant owner. Go ahead, Nick. Were you saying? Oh, no, no, no. I, I wasn't saying anything, but I oh, okay. comment when you're done about this. Sure. And then the other one just on the now is focus on customer service. If folks reach out, um, set the expectation. Um, I know a lot of us are dealing with teaching our children at home. We're working different hours. Um, we're juggling more than just the business side of things. And it's, I think, again, okay to let your consumer know, you know what, I've acknowledged your email or I've acknowledged your instant message or your text. You know what, I'm in the middle of teaching my kid. I'll be back to you in an hour or two. Can I, you know, being focused on that service and that communication, I think people understand it and are empathetic. Um, and then when we wrap up, um, guys, remind me to come back to some of the long-term things that we're thinking about as mm -hmm. to how to run and, and show up for your business on Facebook and Instagram. So Nick, go ahead up with your question yeah no um in terms of small businesses uh you know i think right now it's really important to um to kind of step outside of your comfort zone utilize facebook live which we're going to talk about later um even utilize zoom like we're doing now and mm -hmm. listen a lot of these businesses are closed like you know i get my beard trimmed every three weeks um i'm gonna look like rip van winkle in about a month so. <laughs> But like I could reach out to to my barber, uh, her name's Catherine, and I could do a Facebook Live with her, right? And talk to her about her business and so on and so forth. So these small businesses right now really need you um, to help remind the community that they're, they're still around and, and when things go back to normal, hopefully in the near future, these businesses will still be um, alive and well. So it's a great way to like get out there in your community and show your face and show your support because that's going to you know, bring a lot of um, referrals and business to you in the long run. Yeah, I mean, even as an example, we have, um, in, in, I live in Oakland, California, we have a store in, in our neighborhood that does, um, it's kind of a catch-all fun store where you can go in and get books or you can get jewelry or whatnot. And they were offering free delivery of Easter baskets for kids. And so my wife, um, I need to be quiet. My daughter's upstairs, actually. We ordered one, but it was really great. And so then if you do that kind of thing and you tag them in, fa in your Facebook profile, if you mention something like this, it's a reciprocal way of just shipping uh, what we call shipping love to businesses locally. So um, knowing your leaders in your community, um, knowing how active you are, um, I think in lieu of maybe not having listings, that's how you can show up and be there for, for folks in your local community. Um, so why don't we do this? Why don't we pivot over, Tristan, why don't you start and pop open the uh, two-page document? 
-hmm. and I can start the process of walking you through Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and how to take some video and give you some tips and tricks. Yeah, let's get into the good stuff. It's all good stuff. Here we go, buddy. Here we go. Tell me when you can see my screen. I can. This is great. Thank you, my friend. Okay, so um, why don't you go to the first page? This is the second. So go up. Oh, yeah. Page. Figures I'd start on the wrong page, Scott. There we go. No, it's, there's no problem. So one of the things that we have noticed and we're seeing throughout the industry is that people are using live, both Facebook and Instagram, more and more to um, show their open houses. Um, again, I want to recognize that state by state, the regulations of, you know, being an essential worker, can you go out? They're different. Um, so I'm going to give you some tips and tricks also for if you can't go out. Um, and hopefully the way I would hope you guys take this away is, you know, think about this from a long-term perspective that um, we don't know when this ends. First, we don't know when, you know, this will pass. And second, we don't know what the consumer mindset will be once it does pass. So I think, think about this as a long-term strategy for your business. And that'll help you think about how to hone these skills more and more. It also, so the more and more you do them, the better you become at them. So a couple of things. First, plan how you want to show up on live. One of the things uh, we'll talk about a little bit here is much like a football team scripts their first 20 plays, um, script your play. If you were running an open house and I'm showing up in person, you probably have a script or a flow or how you want to walk through the house, the attributes of the house that you want to uh, show off. Um, so just think about it this way, which is, you know, the things that you do in preparation of a normal in-person open house, we want to do with live. So before we start, there's some technology things that we want to make sure we do. First, um, I'm going to have Tristan show you, um, there's a device called a gimbal. Um, he's going to show you really quick what this looks like through your curveball here, um, but hold this up. This is really important. You can get these on Amazon for about what, 80 to $100? Yeah, it, it runs about a hundred bucks. I mean, you can probably get it for about eighty of you. I, I have I have the gimbal too. So there's a, it's called the Osmo by DJI, and this one's the version two. It allows you to shoot, which you're going to talk about, uh, vertically, right? Mm -hmm. And also and uh, horizontally, right? Yes, absolutely. So uh, the three is a little bit more expensive, and I don't think it does much more than this. Maybe it mm -hmm. like says hello to you, and that's it. And again, this is, I think, um, a long-term play for your business. So if you think about, you know, one thing, we're all thinking about expenses and liquidity right now. We know it's important. But this is a long-term play that you would want to have um, in your arsenal anyway, whether we were going through COVID or not. And probably coming out of it, as we think about more and more, the more you do lives and the more you do video, you're going to want to have a tool like that. Um, so T, why don't we go back to the document? I can walk people through it. Um, hey, uh, just let me tell Nick something. Nick, um, for when I'm sharing the document on the screen, for some reason, it doesn't let me answer the Q&A questions. I can only see the chats. So just heads up, I can't see those. I'll keep those open. Thanks, buddy. Great. All righty. Okay, so before we start, um, the first thing we want to do is you can use Facebook events to get your open house on calendars, sending updates and reminders. Um, you can send an email blast to your network, letting them know when you're going to go live from your Facebook business page. Very, very important. You have to do this from your Facebook business page. There are a lot of reasons which we probably should do a second webinar at some point in the next couple of weeks about why a Facebook business page matters. I think more and more, um, when I first started in the ver in the uh, industry, I go to conferences and I say, who has a Facebook business page? And not a lot of folks would raise their hand. More and more agents understand that you need that for a variety of reasons, but make sure you broadcast from your Facebook a business page. Again, you're a business, super important, relevant information that consumers want to see. Um, and so what you can do is you can take those details, put a link back to your Facebook page in the email, you can put it on your website, um, and then you can directly reach out to people through that methodology. So um, a couple of people that I've heard use this using this tool <clears throat> are using lead forms to capture emails so they understand who's actually showing up to watch the open house. It's a great way to fill um, the top of your funnel, make connections to new folks. Just a good way, again, of, you know, if people are interested in the house, it's another way to touch the consumer and actually start that relationship. And again, I wanna make double sure here. Um, I think it's very important that everyone knows that the tools I'm talking about are not about advertising right now. They're not about paying for marketing. If you so choose to do so, that's 
your decision, that's great. Um, we would never say not to do it. I just want to be sensitive to know that if you are finding that, um, and I'll, I'll call on you too in a minute, that, you know, funds are funds and liquidity are tight. Just know that this is a free opportunity and a free tool and you don't need to necessarily advertise. T, I'll throw it over to you. Yeah, on that point, when, when Scott's saying that you should use your business page to do lives, here, here's probably the most important reason why uh, if you're not going to put money behind it, right? Let's just leave that part out. Mm -hmm. the, the number one reason for us and why we love running even this <clears throat> webinar that we're doing right now through our Facebook business page for LabCode Agents First is because as soon as it's done, literally you could wait 30 seconds, you go to edit on Facebook by clicking the three dots at the top uh, of the actual post. Then after that, it opens up a screen and you can change it so that you can add captions and you add captions. It only has English right now, at least mm -hmm. here. Uh, you add captions and it takes you less than 10 seconds. The whole process is less than 10 seconds. And all of a sudden, when you click save, you wait a second and you have captions for the whole video, no matter how long it is. Um, and that to me is absolutely amazing, Scott. So um, it is, it, it's, it's a great tool to you and you're, you're, you're right. You know, certain content, longer form content on Facebook, most people do actually now turn on the volume. Um, in feed, if you're cutting up smaller bits of the video, we think about it, we call it thumb stopping creative, you know, you're scrolling and you're, mm -hmm. you know, or you're swiping now, obviously between stories. So those, ways of using text in any sort of creative is really good and it's really important and it's help it helps the consumer understanding and conceptualize what you're talking about um so that's your pre-work just setting up the event on your page putting it on the calendar sending out invites using your email blast using your website capturing that information making sure people know um, that you're going live one of the anecdotal stories I heard, which was really interesting, somebody was telling me that they did a live and they had maybe 30 or 40 people show up. But after, to Tristan's point, after they published it on their Facebook page, they saw the viewing, they got, I think, 1,300 views post the live. So if you think about it too, it's not just in the moment about capturing how many people are live. It's how much of that content is actually going to be looked at. So a good example right now is we have about 500 people watching this live. But it'll be interesting when Nick and Tristan post this, like how many more views will we get later in the day, even though right now yeah, I mean, we're dude, The last one we ran last week, uh, we <clears throat> got 45,000 views, right? And right. we had we had about a thousand people watching it live here. But that's that's a lot. And the ability for yeah. the replay on Facebook is so important that here's here's the part that a lot of people don't understand. And and I want because Nick and I do this every day, probably like three, four, five, six times a day. Mm -hmm. And so pay attention to this part. We're, the way that we're using Zoom is uh, we're using Zoom to do this right here, right? Interviewing maybe our local leaders, the community people, people like you, Scott, uh, more national, international, but whatever you're doing on the real, in the real estate world, you can run it through Zoom and then Facebook Live it through Zoom so that now, once it's running live on your business page first, right? Because you can caption right. it. Then you can run that bit. You can then go to that business page, right? It usually takes two people like Nick. The reason he's looking into his screen and sometimes I'm the one looking into my screen is because we're sharing it and we're doing Facebook lives and we're doing Facebook watch parties. Mm -hmm. What happens exactly. is that I'll take you through the process. So you understand the power of this. We're using okay. Zoom. To this go live. Oh, sorry, Tristan. No, no problem, dude. We're Sorry. using Zoom to go live into Facebook, into our business page. Then we share that business page into our Lab Code Agents group. You could share it into your personal page. Then we go to our business page and say, create a watch party. Mm -hmm. And then it says, well, where do you want to run the watch party? And so then we say, well, we want to run it in here, 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 and here. And it's like five different places. And as soon as the watch party goes live, it starts pulling in people that normally tune in to your thing. So the algorithm knows, hey, these people normally tune in, let me pull them in for you. And then you have another audience. So besides the 500 people we have on now, we're gonna have in and out between another 3000 people watching in the next hour. And that's the power of Facebook when you do it right. Now, I did a video of this and I'll post it towards the end 
so you can understand how Zoom works with live. But I just wanted to touch on that, Scott. No, it's great. And I think the other thing that's really important um, that we talk about is that the methodology of what we're also talking about on Facebook can be used on Instagram. So you can do an Instagram live and you can do a Facebook live. Um, you can hit different consumers knowing that they're in different places. So understand that um, it's an and not an or um, kind of strategy. So when we go to point two, so the second um, pillar right here is the live open house. A couple of big tips and tricks here. First, the reason I brought up the gimbal and I wanted to show it to you is because what we don't want is uh, we don't want the Blair Witch Project type of video. We don't want <laughs> it bouncing around and making people sick. Um, you know, that's not optimal for you, nor is it optimal for your seller or the, or the consumer. The other thing I would say is the first bullet point you'll see here is play on your tour. One of the things that we've been talking about is, and it's hard to do, it's not easy, is you know, imagine that you are with people. How would you interact? There are things, cues, conversations, obviously that you're not gonna necessarily have when you're doing it in a live environment digitally, but looking at comments, seeing what's coming in, having that virality. If somebody says, you know, at some point you're in the kitchen, hey, can you walk over again? I'd like to see the range. Those are ways that you can interact, but play on the tour. The other reason I think it's really important to plan the tour, there's a sales perspective of it. There's also a safety perspective of it. Know that, you know, know the layout of the house. You know, if there's a sunken living room and there's a step down, and you forget, walk it, rehearse it, do it that way so that you feel, one, safe and confident, and two, that the production value will look good. The other thing that you can do in the planning your tour and live is that you can take video. So if you feel that maybe there's something in the, in the course of doing a live that you may miss, you can also go and do that planning of the tour, shooting just video onto your smartphone and then editing it and publishing it later, both to your Facebook profile page and business page and also your Instagram uh, profile page. Second point. So once you've done all that pre-work, once we know the plan, we know the statements, we want to have our opening, we want to talk about it, we want to be safe and secure, um, make sure you introduce yourself, make sure you share your credentials, make sure you give the, you know, I always call it the headline. What's the, what's the headline? What's the elevator pitch to start the process, to start the live, to start the video? There's two reasons. One, one why you want to do this one, obviously people will go in and out of a live, but when you welcome them, if they are on time for the appointment, the appointment, the digital appointment, they definitely want to see and understand who you are. The second thing is that's a really great content to take later on and to edit and chop down. So if you want a smaller message to run on Facebook or on Instagram where you take that video, even just that 15 second rehearsed welcome and this is about the house before you even start, um, even if you do it outside for the curbside appeal before you even walk into the house, that's a great way to start. People may come in and out, um, so make sure you remind them of the property that you're touring. So again, you, know, you don't have to do this every 30 seconds or every minute, but if you find yourself 20 minutes into a live, you probably every five minutes just want to remind people of the address, the neighborhood, um, go back, you know, frequency matters. That's how we learn. So making sure that you do that, it won't sound weird, trust me, over 20 minutes to repeat the address and the neighborhood and some attributes is really important. And then, you know, interacting with the audience, stopping, pausing, and maybe looking at your comments and maybe calling that out as you see them on the screen and you call that out. And so let's say Tristan's asking a question. You go, Tristan, great question about the backyard. You know what? This pool actually goes 10 feet deep or the pool has a cover that's safe for the kids or we have a work shed. You know what? The current occupant in the work shed has converted this into an art studio. It's fully wired for Wi-Fi. You can imagine any number of things that people may ask. The other thing you can do is go back and look at the comments and the questions and later reach out to them through Messenger. If you feel that it's a little bit too much in the moment, you can go back and have that kind of interaction afterwards. You can say, hey, Tristan, I saw your comment on my live and reach out to them by, by Messenger and send them a message and say, you know, let me answer this for you right now. So great ways to connect. Doesn't cost you anything except time and just being intentional with your planning. Um, one other thing during a live that I want to um, speak to and this is just something that we feel from a Facebook perspective will help you, is traditionally what we've seen in real estate to this point is that most imagery is static and it's um, horizontal versus vertical. And it's a, it's a horrible pun, but think about this and think about the real estate of it. Think about the screen. If you think about your consumer experience on our platforms and stories, it fills the screen. So if you look over to that right-hand side, that image of that house, it's shot vertically. 
one of the things that we as an industry team at Facebook have been talking a lot with our creative teams about is, you know, how can we use the amazing real estate on these phones? Because people hold them, they scroll, they thumb. So think about that. The more that you can shoot vertically, and again, you might have wide pans where you go across. Um, maybe you want to go up and you want to shoot, you want to show the chandelier or the ceiling fan, or it's got vaulted ceilings. Again, Shooting it vertically will allow you to take advantage of where people are spending a lot more time on Facebook. So the more real estate it takes up in your feed, that's better than being horizontal. And it's especially important if you're putting it into a story environment because then it fills the whole screen. It actually looks like it's been cut and um, edited for stories. So that would be something I would say, you know, don't fall prey to feeling like you have to do horizontal. But go ahead, Tristan. Oh, you're on mute, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I know. I, it's it's, okay. it's uh, okay. There are a couple of questions that I want either you or Nick to answer. Uh, sure. So either, either one of you can take this one on. And the question is, how long should a video be on Facebook when you're shooting a live? What should we shoot for time-wise? So I'm going to give you sort of a not answer, which I know will drive people insane. I think you have to make sure that you show the house the way you would show it. If that takes 20 minutes, so we have, we have different behaviors with how we interact with Facebook. So we um, have our watch um, platform, which is long form video, and we call that lean back entertainment. So whether it's original content or content driven by a business page. So as an example, I'm a huge major league uh, baseball fan. Oh yeah. When, Go ahead. when are Nick and I going to get a show on watch for Facebook? Sorry. Yeah. So that's what someone, <laughs> that's that. like a very important question. Uh, that was like the most, I, had I, to, I, I would like the three of us to get a show on watch. So I, 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 I'm coming along for the ride. Um, uh, <laughs> you can be on it. Too. Pardon me. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it'll take you can be on it too so. oh no, no i'm no. kidding you're i kid. know you are uh, but i think it's i actually think that it's important if you look at content in the way that these webinars run think about it right this is going to probably be about a 45 minute webinar it, you know right most of the lives that um, nick and tristan do in the group they're long form and think about it you kind of lean back you watch and you're not thinking about how much time i'm doing this so in other words what I want to say to folks is, look, if you have a large house and it has a lot of attributes and you have to walk outside and it's got a lot of acreage to it and it's got a lot of features and it's got a pool and it's got a work, take your time. People are there. They will go back. Now, what you can do, post this, and we'll talk about number three, the after live is you can take that and then edit that content down to shorter form videos if you want to put it, put it in stories or you want to put it in newsfeed. So the way I think about it is, Live, do your job, do your job the way you would normally do it. People will find it to be um, something that they want to, you know, want to consume. Don't get hung up on, oh my God, I've been on for five minutes. I need to get off. Like, no, if you've only done the downstairs and the upstairs is going to take 10 minutes and the backyard is going to take another five, do what needs to be done to profile that house. You have plenty of time afterwards to cut it into shorter segments. Rule of thumb for stories or anything in feed is we'd like to keep video 15 seconds long to lead to an action. So it would lead back to your Facebook for business page where they can watch the longer form content or they can go to your website. So just think about it this way. Do your job, what you normally do in the live, take your time. And then if you're cutting up and you want things in your, in your stories or you want it in feed, edit it, cut it up. I think the intro probably is great. Um, I think other things that you feel are special about the home, um, if it has that amazing backyard or it has that refurbished kitchen, you know, cut that video into 15 seconds and then drive them to your website, drive them to your Facebook for business page. Yeah, I think that that's important that you said that, Scott, only because it's, it's a great idea. From when we went to your office, your team was saying that, that we have three seconds or less to capture people's attention. And so when we're running an open house live, it's important to start with the juiciest part. And that's, that's really something along the lines of, check out the reason why the sellers bought this home originally. It's my favorite part of the home. And then you go into, hi, this is Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. Let me take you through that part of the home, right? Yeah. And so the 15 seconds should really be about that. And then, mm -hmm. then say, if you want to see the rest of the home, take a look on my wherever business page, wherever, wherever. Uh, yeah. But I think just to capture them initially, it needs to be juicy. 
Not only that, but also too, if you find that you're doing this by yourself and you don't have a second person with you to open doors or to make things easy, you know, shoot a 15 second video outside the house that you could use later. You know, I'm Tristan and I'm sitting, you know, I'm in Malibu today and I'm at, you know, one Ravenwood Drive. Look at this beautiful mid-century modern house. Come on in for my for my Facebook Live and I'm going to take you through the house. So you can do different pay points of video. Always remember the things that we've seen through the couple of years that we've been really active in real estate is that the curbside, that first image from the street really, really matters to people. So you can cut a piece of video there, not use it on the live. Although if you have an assistant or somebody to help you get the front door open, fine. But if not, then just start it in the foyer, start it in the entryway. Usually if that's where you're positioning yourself during an open house, don't do it any differently. Um, so just tips and tricks for that. So think vertical, um, plan, shoot some video, um, shoot a, an introduction for the outs from the outside of the home. Again, you can repurpose it later. If you have somebody with you who can open the door, you know, maybe introduce that person so they don't doesn't look weird. Those are all just little tips and tricks. And also experiment. That's why I'm saying do your pre-work with video. Find what you feel works for you so you feel like you're showing up and you're feeling good about that. If you feel good about how you're showing up, it'll come across really well um, on a live video. So going... Go, somebody that's been waiting for a while here. Yeah. Can we just talk about real quick doing live from your business page versus your personal page and where they should be doing that? Our you know, stance... You know, what's preferred. Yeah. Our stance is always that you should be using a business page. There, It's just, for one, people do look at you as a business. You are a business. You're CEO of your own business. Um, simple things about you on your business page, your hours, your physical location. I know in COVID right now that that's, you know, that's not normal. We're living in abnormal times. But there's also just, frankly, the business page is designed to give you business functionality versus a personal page. And so we always talk about the importance of a business page for a variety of reasons. Tristan brought up the captioning, um, the way that you can schedule appointments, the way that you can frankly communicate on messenger for, as a business, as a follow-up. Um, I think it's, we always stress the importance of the business page. It's there to be used not only by the largest corporations in the world from the Nikes and Amazons, but actually the best successes that we do see across the globe are, you know, our small business, um, business owners using it for functionality. So that, that we've never changed that, um, that hasn't changed during COVID. It's always a best practice. Use your business page, your business. Um, it's just a bet. There was more functionality and there's more, I think, frankly, I think more authority coming out of a business page than a personal profile page. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you covered this, but when someone's doing an open house event, can they go live within the event itself? They should be able to, yeah. Okay, so like, let's say you're promoting an event, you're gonna do a live open house, all these people join into the event, they said they're gonna attend, and That's then right. from within the event you wanna go live to reach those specific people, it will then notify them and say, you know, Nick Baldwin is now live within the event and they can click through and yeah. watch there, right okay cool someone just asked and i was just curious because i hadn't checked that out yet yep so t i don't know if you want to bring the the screen back up we'll we'll talk point three of what you can oh, do really quickly okay. afterwards we'll grab that no problem no you cannot do a, a live from your business page and personal at the same time somebody was asked that is correct that's but you can only... like we were talking about before you do a live and then when it's done yep. you can do a watch party to your to that's your right. personal but what that's you exactly do right. too, this is what Seth Godin does. He pops open his, uh, he has like a computer screen and two phones, right? So he's got mm -hmm. Instagram live going on one, Facebook live going on the middle one. And then I think he's got like YouTube live going on the left. So he's got all three going on and you can definitely do that if you're stationary, right? Or you have somebody yeah. following you. Exactly. You, that is juggling a high wire act. I would definitely say um, starting out, um, pick one, um, unless you have an assistant. And if you do have somebody who can assist you, even the sellers of your home, knowing that this is uh, an interesting time, that's important. And actually, I want to pause the more I think about this. I think it is important for states that we know that agents can't go, and you can leave this up, Tristan, it's fine. Um, where where agents are not right now considered to be essential employees, 
you can also send this document to your sellers you can, and have them help you shoot video. Now, you wouldn't want them necessarily to be live because they're not you. However, if you can't get to the house for whatever reason, you can also have a gimbal delivered from Amazon, have them pick it up. You can email them this guide. A lot of the things that are best practices in live are best practices in video. So don't get caught up on, wow, I sent them a live thing. You want me to have my sellers do this live? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they can capture video content if you can't get to the house using this guide, using these best practices, walking them through, showing them the links that are on page two when we get there so that they could shoot video and ship it to you if that's an extreme case. And we have heard of folks doing that and thinking about it. If I can't get to the house, what am I going to do? Well, I'm gonna ask my seller to help me. I'm gonna teach them best practices. They're gonna send that content back over to me and we're going to figure out how to make that into something that can actually be shown to our sphere and our community. So um, just know that that's an option. That's good. Um, I have a question for you, Scott. From yeah. the uh, first, Guys, for those of you following along, I did post the captioning your videos on Facebook video that I did on YouTube. So take a look on the chat box. You can take a look. It's like less than four minutes. It's super easy to do. Uh, but the question for you, Scott, is this. The, someone was shooting, and this is a problem for everybody. That's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. Someone's shooting a video with their phone, and then it's a live and then in some parts it's crystal clear and then all of a sudden it goes like really blurry and then it comes back. Is, yeah. that, is that a problem with their, their connection or is that a problem on Facebook? Can you help with that? It's most likely a problem with the connection in the house. Um, I've had, as I think all of us have, if you've run any video conferencing over the last month, um, I was having a real tough day yesterday with our Wi-Fi where it was pixelating knock on wood, um, you know, we've got about 10 more minutes. We're, we're, we're doing well so far. So I think a lot of that is a, um, a connection issue. Um, something that you may wanna do to mitigate that is make sure to ask the sellers for their Wi-Fi password and see if you can log into the Wi-Fi, use their Wi-Fi versus trying to use over the air signals. Um, I have on occasion for just my laptop hotspotted use my phone as a hotspot, but obviously you're shooting off the phone, so that doesn't really work because you're not carrying around a laptop. Um, but if you're, if you're thinking about um, bandwidth, if they're bandwidth issues, maybe being on Wi-Fi as you shoot, and if you have an assistant who's on laptop, maybe answering questions or looking at comments, maybe they hotspot. Those are ways, I think, to get around it. But um, the biggest one I would say is try to get your seller's Wi-Fi password and see if you can use their Wi-Fi network because since they're out of the home, they won't be streaming anything. They won't be sucking up any bandwidth. That's probably the easiest way to go. Or asking them too. Um, I'll give, the, give all of you a, a you know, personal thing here, which is um, I've rented this house for 10 years. Um, there are dead spots in this house. Um, it's a small house I rent. It's about 1,000 square feet. But if you go to certain points, we drop off. So also maybe before you do this, ask your sellers, do you guys have drop off? Do you have places where the Wi-Fi drops off? I want to do a live. You know, if I walk to this corner of this room, do I drop off? Just again, that's part of the pre-work. Some questions you can ask those folks. I love that. Guys, uh, they're asking a lot of questions on editing video, what apps, what uh, software. So, so, so why don't yeah, so why don't we go to the, the third thing for the after, Tristan, and then some tips and tricks. Um, and most of the time we've, we've, you know, frankly used, we've talked a lot about our native tools. Um, if it's not in this deck, I can get you guys some thoughts on some apps. Um, post this that I can give to the two of you and you guys can post it up in the group. Let's do it. I also posted a video on apps that Nick and I use. Nick uh, uses one that I didn't know about and he introduced all of us was Big View. I love that one. That's what I I, love Big View. one of my favorite apps ever. Dude, it's so yeah. good. Big View is, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a closed, ca it's not a closed caption. It's a teleprompter app. Mm -hmm. uh, and also you can add uh, backgrounds if you're standing in front of a blue screen. You can add credits and graphics. It's, oh dude, it's the best, it's the best, it's awesome. And they added, so now that you put the teleprompter, Nick, when you write yeah. everything out, at the end, it says, well, do you want to use that for captioning too? And you're like, oh, yeah. really? They just added that, which that is the That must best. be the new update, I haven't seen it. That's really good, dude, I love it. It's cool. a great app. 
So, hey, T, can we go back one page? I'm going to do the, the, the third point and then we'll get back. So after that, so one thing for the two of you, I will um, look into our creative shop did give us some suggestions on apps. Um, I think for a variety of reasons, we couldn't put it in this document, but I can pass that along to you guys. So let me go back and look for that and see if there are anything that they, um, that they recommend um, just as context for the t for folks uh, viewing. Facebook has a creative shop. It's a bunch of folks that are ex-agency folks. They help us think about creative things such as FB Live video, best practices. So I will make sure Nick and Tristan have some ideas on some apps and post editing software. Dude, I'll send you um, a video too so you can take a look at other ones that I that oh, can I use. You'll love it. Per perfect. Um, so, you know, what we talked about is, you know, using links on the video for live after, um, you know, saving your live video to edit. We've talked a lot in the, the last 40 minutes about, you know, editing it, making it shorter clips. So again, um, you can use that content in a variety of ways. So we can use it live. We can go back and have the watch party so we don't have to cut if it's a 30 minute tour that down but then if you want to use snippets to drive traffic to the web page to your facebook for business page make sure you try to keep that content 15 seconds make sure to tristan's point to you give context to the consumer you know just showing up with a video in the middle of the bedroom isn't going to give somebody context so literally that's why i was saying if you want to shoot a stand-up video before you go live outside the house with that curbside picture or you know you find that it has a beautiful backyard, it has a garden. You know anything that you think. Just think about the consumer. Think about get creative. Want to watch what, right. exactly? Why do I want to watch this content? I had content not, right. I had. I don't even know who it was or what real estate agent it was, but it caught my attention because he started off the video with, "This is how my dog sees the house," and he's like already mm. on the floor next That's to his wife. That's amazing. Like, That's amazing. I'm like, That's amazing. Oh, watch this. Yeah, That's a great um, start to a video though. That'll get that me. is a great start to a video. It's like if you're, well, I, again, if you're using a gimbal, I think you could do some interesting things, right? You could kind of like have it go down and you know at doggy level, um, stick it through a dog door, a cat door, if you've got pets. Um, but again, I think. I do think shoot that outside introduction video because again, I think that's a really good thing to have in your arsenal. Um, making sure that you use comments to gauge what type of information they're looking for about the property. That is sort of like, you know, it's the Sherlock Holmes thing. It's like, we're looking for clues to solve the mystery. The mystery is like, what do they want to see? And it, you know, again, you can use this almost in a way where if you were doing an open house, most likely you're probably hearing similar comments throughout that time that you're doing it use the comments here to find that kind of clue. What is it that they're looking for? What is it that you need to show? That will probably give you a clue as to, you know, frankly, what you want to cut from an editing perspective to repurpose later. If you're getting a lot of questions on the outside and it's cool, that it's your clue that's becoming the hero product of the house. The house is always the hero. The house is always the star. So let's find the attributes that make it even more so. Um, and then I did touch on this earlier. I would follow up with people. You can use Messenger for free. Again, these are all free tools. This is not about um, advertising. This is just things you can do organically. If you're finding that people are making comments and they have you know, several comments in there, you can then go back after the live and reach out to them on Messenger. Um, it's real identity. They know it's coming from you, which is nice. It's not that weird. You know, you get that phone number and you go, who is this over SMS text? This is somebody who actually shows up. You know who they are. You see a profile picture. You can start um, an, you know, a conversation there. So if we go to the next page, T. All right. This is just, you know, after this is sort of if page one is your playbook, this is really the tactical how to practical directions made simple. Um, the pro tips we talked about are over to your right. You know, walking slowly, go slow through the house. Um, trust me, you know, you would anyway, so don't be any different with your, with your camera. Um, think about trying to be smooth. You don't want it to be all over the place. We talked about the Blair Witch stuff. Um, and then the other thing that I think is really great to do, and, and Lab Code Agents is a phenomenal, you know, it's, it's such an instrument for education in the industry. It's one of the reasons that we love working with Nick and Tristan so closely. We've developed such a close relationship over four years is look at what other people are doing. Ask around, ask. And by the way, somebody again might do something that you're like, mm, I'm not fully comfortable. That's not me. But you can look to others to see how they're using these tools. You guys are your best research in the field. You know, what I'm giving you is kind of the macro state of the state of what these tools can do for you. 
but there's nothing better than looking to your peer set and seeing what they're doing and what's working and what's not and crowdsourcing that information to be better at this. Um, some of those practical tools I gave you, such as shooting vertical, doing the 15 seconds, those are things that are best practices for all of the things that we're thinking about for Facebook and Instagram. But use folks in the industry to see like, hey, what's working? How are you doing this? What are some things that, frankly, we never like to admit when we don't succeed in something? What are some of the failures you had? Why? What would you do differently? I think that using your peer set for information is hugely helpful. Um, the other thing, just really quick, there are two useful links. I want to make sure that you guys have these. Um, one is live.fb.com. Um, so that's in the red section under um, how to start and go live from your page. And then there is a general best practice website. A lot of links, a lot of examples. We didn't want to put that in this document. Um, frankly, it's a website you can go to and look for. Um, we wanted to make this much more like the easy guide to getting going. Um, but there, there's a lot of information that you can look to. Don't be surprised, though, that a lot of the information might speak more to larger businesses that are using live, um, using event, you know, for a while. Um, when live came out, I worked with Visa at the time. They were doing Super Bowl shows, shows from the Olympics. So, you know, glean what you can off of large enterprise um, businesses and use it in this local practice that you have. All right. And I put those links into the chat. So if anybody's looking right. for them, just check those out. And then we're also going to email this out with the links. Mm -hmm. So you guys don't, right. don't miss it at all. Question for you, uh, either, either you or, or Nick Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go live with an event, with a Facebook event, do you go in if you're posting within the event and then choose go live inside of the event? Or how does that work? That was the question I have from Bruce. Um, you do you do go create and choose from the event, from the list. So that's actually how to create an event from your page. Oh, I'm, I'm moving my mouse. <laughs> I'm realizing I'm moving my mouse to see like what you guys have. Um, so you can use that and go from the create from the event. Um, cause again, you're inviting people from the event and then you started from the event page. Awesome. So I know we're not talking about this, but I wanted to bring it up. How much time do we have? Oh, good. Um, Five what do you think of premiere on Facebook? Have you guys talked much about the premiere side? Cause so here's how premiere works. You go on Facebook and let's say I upload a brand new video on there. Um, and I can choose to premiere it at a certain time. So rather than just do an event, it's a premiere and it goes out at, let's say today at 5 p.m. And then it notifies everybody. And then on the top, it says premiere, like brand new video type thing. Um, have you guys talked about that or are you guys sticking more on the event side right now? We haven't talked about it, but I think, again, this is a great example of you control when you want this content to go out. You can control how to repurpose the content. Um, I had a question yesterday. Um, in one of, the, one of the webinars we did, you know, what's the best time to go and have this content out? We know that in the early morning when people wake up, they're, they're active on Facebook, they're active during lunch, and, and they're active during, um, frankly, what used to be primetime TV viewing. So it's okay to know that you know if you shoot a, a, a live at two o'clock in the afternoon, you may only get those 30 people showing up. You can use Premiere and publish it later when you feel like you want it to be premiering as a TV show type of thing. Um, you can control the time through that mechanism. Um, so just know that that's a, that's a really nice, useful tool. It won't, you know, you're still going to shoot live, but then you can repurpose it to repurpose that whole video and premiere it later in the day. And the golden rule, especially right now, is with people at home, I think we're getting a lot of folks, you know, we've always seen more usage on the weekends, more usage during the mornings, um, and what used to be prime time, probably less during the day. And, and I would probably say right now, um, it's a little bit, you know, I don't have any stats, but I would think it would be a little bit all over the place because a lot of us are teaching our kids during the day right now with school from home. So if you use that premiere function to publish it at a certain time, just kind of know that mornings and evenings are good. And then I would also think about when you publish it, tailoring it to when you're online so you can answer questions or reach out through Messenger, right? Um, so that's a, that's a piece to it. Go ahead, Nick. Question. So yeah, you guys right now in this weird situation that we're in, you guys are seeing, you guys are seeing uh, activity kind of all over the board, right? Like there's really no, 
is there really no consistency in, in terms of when people are on Facebook at this point? We haven't seen anything. These are anecdotal stats that I've just seen through my eight years being at the company about usage. Um, I hope in the coming weeks that we can share more. Um, right now, I don't have anything empirical that I can give you a stat on. I just know that through the time I've been at the company, we have you know heavy usage obviously throughout the day, but more in the morning, and it spikes at night and more more on the weekends, I think, just generally speaking. Um, that's also a prime time where people are kind of, you know, on their phones, on social media. They're not at work. You know, frankly, they're not at work. So as we wrap up, I just want real quick. Yesterday yeah. I was talking to an agent named Josh Bickle, who is very analytical, and he was saying that he is seeing his conversation rate uh, from from leads he's capturing through Facebook ads. His, his, no, I'm sorry, his contact rate has gone up 37% over the last several weeks and his conversation length, like the amount of time he's talking mm -hmm. to people uh, 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 through Facebook that, that are opting into his ads has increased about 16%. So wow. he's, he's reaching more people more frequently and he's having longer conversations and we need to just take advantage of that. You know, yeah, it's not I think, last forever, so you might as well. Yeah. I would also say the thing, I, there are two things I want to end with because we're coming up on time. The first is I do think these tools will change how we think about real estate. We're actively as a team within Facebook, we're a team of 20 in total covering the entire industry. Um, we've had a lot of conversations about, you know, what is this changing? So as a good example, I'll give you one from another industry. General Motors right now is running seven years interest-free loans and dropping the car off at your house. What? My lease is go. up on one. GMC. They, they've been all over the place with, you know, for qualified, for uh, qualified owners, seven years interest for you dropping a car at home. That's something that's never been done before. So that's an adaptation of an industry. Think about what's happening in streaming. No movie theaters open. So, you know, Disney, we all got that, you know, we all got the, the rise of Skywalker, Frozen 2 on Disney+. Plus. So industries are changing and it will be very interesting to see where we go. One of the things we do think is that this, oh, it's, it's funny, I said a certain word and a certain uh, thing, a certain virtual assistant known by Apple decided to talk in my ear. Sorry about that, got distracted. I don't want to say her name again. She'll come back up. But um, yeah, I know, I know. It's uh, the, the curse of technology. You're, you're seeing it right here. But I do think one of the things that will become more permanent is this idea of shooting video We've talked for a long time internally about how do we go from a horizontal creative to a vertical creative. I think that these are things, the user generated content, the use of live, the use of video, the use of these tools will become more prevalent. You'll always have the listing coming from the MLS, but I think the consumers are going to get used to this kind of content coming out of this. Consumers may be slow to come back. We don't know, we, you know no one knows, but I do think the way you can use these tools obviously help hopefully today through a horrific time for all of us, but also hopefully help you down the road. You know, I would hope that in a year or two from now that we're still having conversations and we're ideating and we're getting even better about how we serve this content and it's actually drawing consumers in. It's actually making them want to stay and watch content. So um, I think those are things just, yes, this is a, we're going through a crazy time. It's a blip, but also I think there's going to be some changes, core, core changes to how we present ourselves in the business. And I think this is one of them. Yeah, you know, the thing is, um, this is a really great, while, while there's lots of terrible things going on and, and people are getting sick, um, uh, the silver lining, I think, for agents in our business right now is a couple things. One, I mean, I don't like to see any, any industry go under, but, you know, disruptors like Zillow uh, are having trouble now, right? Like, they came out of a down market and now... Um, just a couple weeks into this COVID crisis, they're pulling back on a lot of their value propositions uh, to their to the to the consumer. Right? Uh, they're also cutting lead costs in half for agents, but meanwhile, that doesn't do much of a difference. It's still very expensive. So, looking at those types of business models in a down market and they're failing, uh, as agents, we need to step up and show our value proposition and so show our worth and show our creativity and start to build that trust. Because once we get out of this in four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months, whenever, um, we, this is our opportunity now to have a better, uh, have to, for the consumer to have a better view of us. And so by doing that, we need to uh, 
get face to face more on Zoom, do more Facebook Lives, create more create more relationships, start running ads and having more conversations because we're seeing statistics uh, within our own, or own organization that agents are having longer and better conversations. So this is your opportunity now to break through um, the, the rut that you're in before because once we come out of it, it's, I think the consumer is gonna see us differently. Well, I want to. I do want to close with one thing, which is just what I opened with. Um, I know we have Easter this Sunday tonight. We start Passover. It's been a really tough month for so many people. Our thoughts are with you. We want to show up as partners and thought leaders to the industry. We thank Tristan and Nick and all of the members of Lab Code Agents for being part of something that, you know, when I talk to internal folks at Facebook, when I talk to leaders and we talk about this group, it's super unique. It's unique for a lot of ways, um, the size, the scope of it, but also the cross collaboration and the sharing and the education. So from our team to everybody out there, we thank you. We know these are tough times. I hope that this helped. There are resources within the links I sent. Do some digging. You know, this is top, you know kind of the top, the start. Um, you know, again, we hope that this is a help. Um, we hope that you know you find this information to be something that you can use for your business. And again, just stay very safe, stay healthy, and our thoughts go out to each and every one of you through this crisis. And we, we'll, you know, we're here now, and we will be here afterwards to help the industry and to help you guys as best we can use our platforms to their most optimal, um, you know, usage for everything that you want to do for your business. And I would say. You know, again, this group is innovative. You, you, we love the fact that you jailbreak our solutions, and that's a great thing. Um, Facebook's got some open architecture, and so you guys, you are the field. You are the ex. You know, we are the, We own the platform. We have best practices, things that we covered today. Um, we want to hear from you. We want to hear successes. I also want to hear what didn't work, and do it through Nick and Tristan. Don't be shy. That's how we all get better. It's a okay to to share that as well. You know. I, I would actually hope that I don't hear everything is sunny and roses because then I'd probably say either one, I did my job way too well, or frankly, we're not being vulnerable enough to show that, you know, this stuff can be challenging, help each other, give us feedback. Um, we will do everything we can to be a better partner and a best partner to you and whatever you need to do to make it through this tough time. Awesome. Remember, guys, this is recorded and we're going to upload it to our YouTube page, which is Lab Code Agents. And it's always on our, on our face, uh, Facebook business page, which is Lab Code Agents. It's always there. You can just go there right now and see it. And it stays there. We don't remove it just in case you don't want to wait for the edited version on YouTube. So thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Thank I know you. Nick and I love you, and, and we're very thankful uh, to Facebook for this partnership. You see? Later, guys. I got to sign off. I got to jump on another Same. I, me, me too. Thank you, guys. Be well. Be safe. Be good. Bye, Tristan. Thank oh. you, buddy.